Hi, I'm Nate, and this is Photo Learningism. I wanted to take a step back from the when should I use dot 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 mini series that is concluded. Go check out those videos and find out the best use cases for the tools that we talked about. Today, I wanted to look at a question somebody asked me because it just really caught my interest about working with panoramas and photo stitching and how we can possibly do that in the tools that we use. I'm going to focus though today on paint.net and how to do that. Stay with me. Okay, so if this is your first time joining the channel, I do a lot of work here to build a community of learning that dominantly focuses on open source tools because there's such power in people and community, but I do touch on commercial products and see how they weigh and stack up against the offerings that come from the community. So go check those out when you have a moment. There's a lot of good information out there. Today, again, we're looking at a question about how you can work with panoramas uh, for right now, specifically in paint.net. Um, the, the thing I'm going to explore, you really could bridge over really into any tool that uses a clone brush or tool. Uh, that's really how this fits together in the example that I tried out just to see if you could do it. I did look if there was a plugin or a specific add-on that somebody developed in the case of paint.net and I'm suspicious that this is also true for Krita or GIMP that it does not exist. It just it wasn't built into those tools and nobody's really gone down that road. However, with what I tried out in my own little experiment, I do think that you could achieve this in any of those tools using this basic process. So I wanted to play this back and explain it as we go and kind of pause. Now, what I did is I created kind of a pseudo panorama where I made a stretch of an image and I wanted to chop it up um, to kind of simulate three individual images. Uh, that's really where I'm working from. And I'm going through those layers. You can see them along the top here. And then I made a blank canvas to work from. I made it exactly the, or at least approximately the same width because I chopped out a little bit here and there just to kind of give it that need to be adjusted along the way. I didn't want to cheat here and just chop up three sections that were from the same picture and then put them together. So you can see how there's not going to be an exact match of what I'm doing here. And also you'll note that I'm inching things into position here. I'm using the arrow keys in paint.net, which is a really nice feature uh, to line them up exactly pixel to pixel and get that right. I'm gonna do the same thing with the third slice here and park that in right where it goes. Um, you could, if you have the patience for it, use the arrow key straight over. I felt pretty confident that I was gonna be able to drop it approximate where it is and then arrow it in from there. So use your judgment um, as the tools best suit you there. So now we can see the stretch of things. You'll notice that there's those flat points where, again, simulating if I had moved the camera and done my, my pictures one piece at a time where they don't line up perfectly. And I expect that would be the case because it would be nearly impossible to perfectly guess and get the edge pixel to pixel as you're doing your rotation uh, with three different shots. So my answer to that was, well, take these three images, snap them up together pixel to pixel by the end of the, the images and try to blend them together on my own, which is actually not so difficult as you might think. This clip that I'm playing back, it actually ran for about 10 minutes originally. I sped that up uh, the 200% just so we could get through this without having to sit through all of that. Um, but just know that this process took me about 10 minutes. And this is not a super complex example, by the way. This is actually like really, really simple. Um, so expect the time to go up with the more complexity that you're working with. But again, this is a simple concept and I've demonstrated it before, which I'd invite you to go check with some basic cloning technique where you're borrowing images from the rest of the, the Im image itself or from the other images to blend and create the effect that it belongs. And there is no scene, there is no edge of the picture. We have to do a little bit of creative uh, borrowing from the right edge because certain textures have a certain look about them when they have uh, an end to them or there's a top to them. Leaves in particular can be problematic like that. But if you're creative and you look around, you can actually borrow components and blend them very easily by taking the hardness down with the clone tool to have more of a blended effect. You're not looking for so much a hard edge when you do that because you want a little bit of, of haze to it, which maybe sounds like it's cheating, but it's really not. You're actually blending it in with what's there because you don't want it to be so harsh that it's obviously fake. So that's what I'm working on here is I am borrowing sections of those patch of trees to create the edge that I want. If it's uh, 
a side of it, I'm trying to find as close to a side as I can and then draw that back in. If it's the top, I'm trying to find pieces that look like a top and then continue on uh, with the background just a little bit to bring it in and make it a little tighter. So you can already see that starting to look like it belongs and like it's actually a continuous stretch of trees instead of a hard edge from one end to another. So again, just a little bit more blending, a little more process to make it look like that's how it always was. Adjusting the hardness just a bit more, trying to make sure we get the clouds and the mountains behind it right. And then there's the sky, you don't want to neglect that. And for that, yeah, in paint.net I found that if I put the hardness all the way down to zero it still does something. <laughs> uh, but it's just a very subtle amount. So that worked out, you can see that. Now we go to the next edge. This is a little trickier because it runs through these reed type plants and you can still get this done with a little bit of careful borrowing of the stems and again there these stems there's a lot of symmetry between them so you can borrow components that will work for you and blend them into the piece of the, and the section of the photo that you need likewise the background is consistent enough that you can borrow that as well if there were a lot of variants in the background you'd have to get a lot closer in to really literally just clone just the pixels you were looking for and then carefully draw the background in as well um, so depending on uh, your appetite for uh, for doing that but it could be done that's the point <laughs> so I think at this point Yeah, what I'm doing now is I am just lining them up side by side so you can see where we started, the picture I started with before I chopped it up. And this is really the end of the uh, the process here. Um, I think it kind of flew through a bit fast on the other side because of the speed up, but it was the same principles and idea that you're very carefully blending with low hardness on the clone brush. So to my eyes, it worked. And I think you could achieve the same results in your own endeavors using three separate pictures. Know that if there's a slight tilt, which is very likely unless you're using a super steady tripod with a leveler, you're going to see a little bit of horizontal variation. And you can still fix that in paint.net because on the corner, if you hover over there, it will change into a rotate tool and you can implement rotational corrections to it. You may have to adjust the overall size just a bit as well to make sure that's flush and tight and you may have to adjust the top and bottom of the image again to make it fit but the tools are there you can do this <laughs> again this thing took me 10 minutes to do i believe it came out really well and i don't see why it couldn't take um anyone the same amount of time uh, or less because uh, again i was trying to think this through and figure it out as i was doing it and you have this to go on now so <laughs> Hope that's helpful to you. Again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Uh, do check out the other videos because we talk about a lot of fantastic tools and options out there, which I do a lot of work to make sure you can know about them in your art technology endeavors. Do give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. Subscribe because that gives me a good indication of what content people enjoy and what's going to help them out. And also, don't hesitate to leave comments and join the conversation. I really do enjoy seeing the feedback from others, getting questions, and really not just to me, but to others in the community so we can make each other stronger. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.